Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 19 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. I will need you to pour yourself an enormous mug of iced coffee. I will need you to get out your Jetson Nano gear and I will need you to get ready to learn some cool new stuff. Hey! want to give you guys a shout out that are helping me out over on Patreon. It's a huge encouragement to you guys that decide to be an active part of this uh, channel. Those of you who aren't helping yet, think about looking in the description down below. There's a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump right into our lesson. And what we are going to do today is we are going to go through the homework assignment, go over the homework assignment, which I gave you in lesson number 18. And just as a quick reminder, I will come over here. What you were tasked with doing was creating a program that has four track bars. Count them four track bars where you can create a rectangle and you can move that rectangle left and right, okay, up and down, and you can create a different size so that you could come over and box somebody in. And so one thing is we're learning how to do track bars and we're also start sort of starting to see that there's this concept of tracking and a lot of times you track with rectangles. So we got to kind of think about where rectangles are and what size they are. And so leave me a comment down below. Were you guys able to do the homework? Did you even do the homework or do you just show up here for my witty comments and you're not really even following along? Yeah. It's funny, some people, believe it or not, there are some people <laughs> that watch these videos that don't have an Arduino or a Nano or anything. They just hang out here because I guess they think it's fun to watch somebody write programs. I don't understand it if you're one of those people please leave a comment and explain to us. All right, but let's come in. I will need you to open up your Visual Studio Code. Okay, and this was the program that we left off in last time. And I will get out of your way here. And what I will do is I will right mouse click and I will say run Python file and terminal. And so this was the program that we did last time. And basically we were just moving the dot around, right? We were just moving the dot around. So that's where we left off. And I think what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, and you should have already, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to do a fresh one. Okay. So we're going to come down and we are going to click on open CV. That is the folder we're working in. We're going to come up here and we're going to create a new file and we will call this open CV eight program eight open CV eight. And then what we are going to call this is track bar track bar 2.py. The .py is kind of important. Now we've got a new program. Now we're going to run over to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. We're going to go, you can search here on uh, Raspberry Pi camera on the Jetson Nano and you should get to this page. We'll come here, click the two little pages and then we can control C the code. <clears throat> and then we can come over here and paste the code. Ah paste the code and then we do like to add one command to this after we create the window right this is the program that just just goes out up fires up goes out fires up the camera grabs a frame shows the frame and we do like to do a cv2 dot move window cv2 move window did i do that right cv2 dot move window yeah i did okay and what window do we want to move we want to move nano cam that's our window and where we want to move it we want to move it to zero comma zero it's sometimes confusing in open cv sometimes it wants like x coordinate comma y coordinate and sometimes it wants a tuple which is in parentheses x comma y wish they'd been a little bit more consistent on that so now we have done that let's make sure that we didn't break anything when we did that we're going to run the program and we broke some oh no i remember 
I'm using, I've got to uncomment out these two lines. I am using the PyCam, so I uncomment this line and this line, and that will fire up the, the, uh, the PyCam. If you are using, if you are using a webcam, you would comment, you would uncomment this one, and then you would set this to either zero or one, should work. But now we have uncommented cam set in cam. This thing should run now. We will say run Python file in window. And there we are. Okay, very good. We are going to quit out of that. And now let's do some coding. Okay, let's get in here and do some coding. So the first thing we need to do, if we are going to create track bars, we are going to need to tell it we're going to need to have a window. And we don't have a window yet. We know down here that we're going to be working with the window nanocam. So let's go ahead and create that up here by doing cv2 dot named window named window and then what do we want to use nano cam because that is our window down there we want to use the same ones we just kind of created up here now we can work with it so what do we want to do I want to create a cv2 dot create track bar okay and then what do we want I want a xval I'm gonna name that track bar xval and where do we want to put it? Well, we want to put it in the window NanoCam. Okay. And then where do we want it to go from? Well, we're going to go from 0 to Display Width. And remember, Display Width was set up here. And so, therefore, our X, X value will correspond to the domain of the window, you know, how uh, wide the, the window is. Okay, and then we have to have a callback function. Our ca callback function is nothing because we want to do nothing, but there has to be a, a function there. And so we will come here and we will define our function, define nothing. And what does it nothing do? Absolutely nothing. It seems kind of silly, but yes, we got to do that. Now we have our first track bar. Let's just run this and. Uh, yeah, let, let me just go ahead and run it. It should show. Run Python file in terminal. Oh, nothing. Same mistake I made last week. Did you guys yell at me? I got to pass it a parameter. I'll just pass it X. X is not really there, but it just wants something there. Okay, got a track bar. Track bar slides. Okay, so we are going to quit out of that. I just, before I do a lot of copying and pasting, I want to make sure that I'm not like off track. So now I'm going to get that track bar and I'm going to make four track bars. So I'm going to do C and then V. Ah, I thought for sure I copied that. Control C. Okay, Control V. Control V. Control V. Okay, so this one is going to be XVAL. This one's going to be y, uh, not y val. This one is going to be width. And this one is going to be height. So this is the width and height of the rectangle that we will be drawing. Get rid of some of this useless white space. Okay, now we come down and we are going to go to that little magic zone that is between reading the frame and showing the frame. And what we are going to do there now is we are going to read in those values. Okay, so I'm going to read in xval, and I am going to read it by doing a cv cv2 dot track bar position. That should work. No, it's get track bar position. Look at that. It guessed it pretty well, though, even though it's get track bar position. All right, you guys see that? Okay, now I need some parameters. Which track bar? Well, I want x val. That's the track bar. Okay. And then what do I want? I want uh, it's in nanocam. Okay, so I've got to give it which track bar I'm going to read and which window it is in. Now we are going to copy and paste like a wild man. So I will copy that and then I will paste it. That was not pretty. I must not have copied it. Right mouse click, copy. Okay, and then tab over, control V. 
enter, control V, enter, control V. So I want XVAL from XVAL. I want YVAL from YVAL. And then I want width from width. And then I want height. Do you know how much misery I've had in my life from misspelling height? You spell it, you spell it like height. It's height, not height. Okay, height. H e i g h c. I think if we said it right, we would be more likely to uh, <laughs> we would be more likely to spell it right if we would say it right. Okay, now we have it. Now, what do we want to do with that? Well, I want to create a rectangle. C. I want to tab over and create a rectangle. CV2 dot rectangle. What was that little momentary pause? I was trying to think, is it draw rectangle, create rectangle? No, it's just rectangle. Okay. <clears throat> and where do I want to put the rectangle? On frame, which is the image that I'm reading in up here. So I'm going to put it on frame. Okay. And then I got to tell it where I want the first point to be. The first corner wants a tuple for that first corner. Where's the corner? Well, it's going to be x val and it's going to be y val. Okay, so that's the first corner. And then what do I need? I need the second corner. Well, the second corner, that one's up here. So the second corner is going to be x val plus width comma y val plus height. Does that make sense? X val plus width, comma, Y val plus height, H E I G H T. Okay, being very careful not to get the code behind that little live shot of the Jetson Nano because I know it, that you guys hate that. Okay, now what else do I need in this crazy rectangle command? Well, I'm going to need a color which goes in as a tuple, and so I'm going to make it zero. I'm going to make it blue, so I will make it 255 comma zero comma zero. <coughs> and then I believe I need to give it a thickness of the line, and we'll make it a three. How about that? Okay, so there is that. We're going to run this thing. Right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. All right. Wow. Look at that. Okay, but <laughs> I've got no rectangle. Well, maybe I got to give it some I got to give it some size. Maybe I got to give it some parameters before it will show up. Ah. Look at that. Huh? Who's drawing a rectangle? toptechboy.com. Look at that. Okay. So you see now xval just moves it around. Okay. YVAL moves it around like that and then we can control the size okay so why would you want to do that well I could now have a button where I could grab that part of the image actually if I wanted to draw a rectangle I would probably the best way to do it would be with the mouse button where you could have like right you could have like left button click down and grab the first point and then drag and then when you let it up grab the second point and so if you did the down and the up you could get the two corners and then you could do it that way but what but this lesson this homework was not about mouse clicks this homework was I've gotten out of my frame here uh, this homework was about creating a rectangle that you could move around and control the size of okay guys this has been kind of a quick short lesson let me sort of show you or tell you a little bit about where we are going to be going in the future lessons. What we're going to be doing is we're going to really be getting into very soon how we could track an object. Like let's say I, I had this object and as I moved it around the screen I could track it. And so we're going to start tracking objects. The the, the two easiest ways to track things, so we're, we're working our way into artificial intelligence. The two easiest way to track thing is one is on color and then you just have an item of a very specific color. This wouldn't be very good because it would match my shirt. So I would meet, need something with a little bit more unique color like this. Okay, 
This is actually a fidget toy that I make on the 3D printer, but I digress. Okay, I could track this because it's red. So the easiest thing to track on is color. And then the second easiest thing to track on would be to actually go in and track on uh, mo uh, motion. Okay, so we're going to do those things next. But to do that, we got to really start getting into some of the hardcore uh, OpenCV uh, uh, commands and they're not hard you see these commands are not hard but we just got to learn them so we've got to sort of learn some things like some thresholding and we've got to learn to look for values that were within certain ranges and then we got to do some masking and some things like that so the next lessons are going to start getting into that I would say the next lesson is really when we start getting into the meat and potatoes or if you prefer the enchiladas of the whole uh, artificial intelligence uh, area okay guys if you like this video think about giving us a thumbs up really helps me within the overall ecosystem and the you know the algorithms the bots the algorithms they do count the thumbs up your big help to me if you'll do that if you're not already a member think about subscribing to the channel think about sharing this with some other people I have a lot of fun doing this I really like having you guys here leave me a comment down below Paul McCorder from toptechboy.com I will talk to you guys later